What's up everybody and welcome back. So today I did something that I've been needing to do for a while, mainly because we are in the midst of a drought here in Utah and my trees have been feeling sorely neglected. So I wanna take you through what I did today in order to try to give them a little bit of extra love and do something just a little bit unique in order to get me to where I wanted to be. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. Okay, so as usual, first things first, if you haven't subscribed, I want you to go ahead and do that. Go ahead and click right here, push that little button, push that like button. Make sure if you have any questions, you ask them. I love to engage with the community, and it's always fun for people to be able to go back through and read through some of the comments, because it might help somebody in the future. You never know. So I wanna walk you through a little bit about what's going on around here. Now, we had a very light and mild winter, and to be honest with you, I don't even know if the ground really even ever froze. It seemed to stay muddy, and it just didn't do what it normally does. The snowpack wasn't really here. So even in the midst of my trees through most of the winter, the mulch was exposed and it would only be covered for a few days when some snow events would come in and then that would be it. So one of the things that was talked about a lot this year was how low our soil moisture readings were and that's not a good thing. At one point during the middle of winter, we were reading the second lowest recording in the last 100 years, which is pretty bad. So I know that these trees were definitely suffering and this is going to be a twofold problem and let me explain why. Firstly, I don't water those trees. They are fully on their own. Uh, the sprinkler system that runs through that whole section has been terminated for a number of years just because it was somewhat wasteful and it really wasn't doing a whole lot for the trees. I could go through and hand water them if I needed to and that would be just fine. Some of them would pick up some overspray from the sprinkler in the lawn, but for the most part, they were there to just fend for themselves. Well, when you go through a heavy drought year like this, especially in a landscape, I mean, these trees were never meant to be parked on this side of the hill. So even though they're native to the area, they are not native to my particular landscape. The particular landscape here is cactus and sagebrush and wild grasses. That's what grows well on this hill not trees, not pine trees, and not quaking aspen. So I really wanted to make sure that they got the water that they needed and started out the season right because they did look a little bit dry and they just seem like they could be struggling a little bit. So here's what I did. I went over to Home Depot and I bought a few Homer buckets and brought those back. Uh, I took a 1 8 drill bit and I put five holes in the bottom of each of those buckets so that it had kind of a similar effect to a watering can, but just sort of a slow seep out of the bottom. Now, when I see a slow seep, this five gallon pail, if I filled it all the way with water, would take right at 10 minutes to drain all the way out. Now, I could have set a hose at the base of each one of these trees, but it wouldn't have gotten the same effect and it would have taken me days to do all of the trees just in the back. There are 37 trees around just that back patio and that would have been ridiculous, especially with how low of a flow I would have needed to put on the hose. This would have been like a 20 or 30 hour project. So since I was using a bucket, I figured why not kill two birds with one stone? And I grabbed my flora green as well, and I ended up using an average of three ounces per tree. So let's talk about the application rate on that for a second, since a lot of people kind of are curious about that. If you don't know about flora green, go ahead and click down in the description below. There is a link that can take you over to it to talk a little bit further about it. But flora green is the Green County Furt uh, tree and shrub mix and it works well on lawns as well, but this is something that has been applied to trees and shrubs all over the country for many, many years as part of a lawn tree shrub type program. So the typical application rate with that material is going to be a half an ounce per caliper inch at shoulder height is how you would look at that. And my trees are gonna range anywhere from like four inches up to like eight, maybe even 10. But for the sake of what I did today, I kind of kept it at just kind of a simple rate and ran three ounces all the way through. So what I basically did was set these pails on the edge of the trunk. I put the holes all to the forward side of the bucket, filled the thing up, mixed my product in, and just let it sit there and seep for 10 minutes. So if these were new plantings, you'd probably be putting something out like two gallons of water per caliper inch and do that maybe once a month. 
As the trees mature, you don't need to do quite that much, but the way it would break down is something like one gallon per inch of caliper up to five inches, and then when you move beyond that, you probably want to run about two gallons per inch, and that would be something that I'd put out a few times this season. So what I decided to do is I was going to feed them this way on this first app and let the water just seep down and get into the ground. But again, based on how dry everything is, this one time isn't going to cut it. So I'll be going back around all of the trees again to make sure that there's water very evenly dispersed and to get the ground fairly well saturated for these dry and suffering trees. Basically the tools I used to do all of this were my five gallon buckets, my Flora Green 402, my Flexzilla hose, which I absolutely love and I'm going to be doing some more on that when I go out and start spraying with it. It's super light, it doesn't kink, it was awesome. And then my little Ryobi, Obi-Wan Ryobi uh, drill, just to knock out the little holes and you know, that was pretty much it. There wasn't really anything else to do but just move water around. So this whole process took me about 90 minutes to get all of them done, uh, given that there were so many. If I'd had a fifth bucket, I probably could have gotten it done a bit faster, obviously, and I wouldn't have had any downtime between the fills. It was actually coming off at just the right amount of speed if I'd had five buckets rather than four. So let's talk about how often you can feed your trees and how you should do that. Now, I don't think there's really a wrong way to do this, so I kind of want to leave you guys with the ability to just be flexible with it when you're putting material out. But running with that like half ounce per caliper inch is a good number to work with. Now, I've sprayed these trees with the ortho sprayer. I've sprayed them with my Petra sprayer. I've sprayed them with a hand can. I've done it pretty much every way. Now with uh, soaking it with the buckets, you can, you can do it and not go wrong. It's just good to get the material down, but the rate will remain constant. And then it's sort of up to you how often you wanna feed those. Now, typically spring and fall is going to be just fine. Uh, when I ran my spray service, we did it five times a year. Every time we did the lawn, we did the trees as well. And those things just went bonkers. And I don't know that you really need to go that heavy unless you really like trimming or you're really trying to establish something fairly quickly because it really does make plants grow fast. The couple things you need to know about the floor green are this. It's got humic, it's got fulvic, it's got kelp. It's got a whole slew of miners. It's got nitrogen, potassium, sulfur, iron, manganese, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum. It's all in there. And so it is a good all around product to catch a lot of stuff. It's not a ton of food and your trees don't really need a ton of food. But here's a word of caution. You need to feed on all sides of the trees. So when I do this the next time, I'm actually gonna come back through, put the buckets on the other side of the tree and feed down. Now I have less concern with the way I did it because the material will sort of move down the hill. But if you spray one side of a tree, that side will grow. You need to know that. You have to get the whole thing and it needs to be consistent or you're only going to have growth on one side. The reason for that is roots uptake into a tree and they go straight up and that's just how it works. You don't have any translocation around the tree unless you get the material around the tree. So that's pretty much it. I know that I'm gonna be doing some deep watering with this a few times this year and this was the most effective way to do it. I didn't wanna run out 400 feet of soaker hose I didn't want to just have a sprinkler spraying all over the place all day long. It just made more sense to drop it directly onto the trunk and let everything soak through. And they're going to be so happy because of it. So if you are in an area that's experiencing drought this year, don't neglect your trees. It's very important. If they dry out and they start to have issues, you will find insects, you will find disease, and you might as well just go ahead and feed them while you're watering them. Kill two birds with one stone and just make sure that you have a good, healthy landscape. That's it. Hope you guys have a great one. I'll talk to you real soon. See ya.